you'll honor the prize. I have about 20 can lights in my house, they were all incandescent. About 5 years ago, Home Depot had a sale on Cree LED bulbs. Dumb luck, I was on their website at work and saw the deal. I figured it was time to get into the modern day and save some money on my electric bill. Okay I'll swing by on my way home. I did not order them online, but the website said the store had them in stock. I printed out the sale price and SKU from the web. Went to the store and loaded up my cart. Went to check out. Rung up at the wrong price. I showed them the online advert. They said no dice. I said, but you match prices. This is a Home Depot store, this is from a Home Depot website. Manager said sorry, but the online store is different from the brick and mortar store, we don't match online prices. Okay fine. So, I put the light bulbs back on the shelf. Go to the contractor desk and hop on their computer. Go to the website, make an online purchase. Have the pro desk print out my receipt. I head out the car, hang out for about 30 minutes. Come back in to pick up my light bulbs. Manager comes over and I show them the receipt for the pickup of the bulbs. Manager, where's is the cart that you had them in? Me, I put them back on the shelf since you weren't going to sell them to me. So, he gets someone to go get the bulbs off the shelf for me. Manager says, you know you could have just left them in the cart. I say, and you could have honored the price when I first got here. It's not much, but it made me happy. Now to the comments. This is why everyone hates corporate. Three years ago, when I worked at Home Depot, that cashier could have made the adjustment without even getting approval. I don't know if it still works the same now, but all customer-facing employees had the authority to make adjustments up to a certain amount as a customer satisfaction measure. I had to pick up a small item, some fuses or something similar. My only item. I go up, they don't scan. The employee asked me if I remembered how much they were. I didn't, maybe $5, but offered to go check. They just said okay and waved me out the door with no charge. I spend a ton of money at that store anyway and that big of kindness makes it easy to choose them again for future purchases. Top tip. Watch the item numbers, too, when ordering. I just bought a slew of doorknobs online from Home Depot. The only reason I bought them online was because I needed 14 and my store showed only 7 in stock. Well, that was the first reason. Then I realized they were $3 cheaper per knob online if I chose F40 ACC 716 instead of F40 VACC 716. They appeared to be identical, with no logical explanation for the price difference, but, wow, the data entry. One said it was 9 inches high. The price difference? That V stands for visibility packaging. Want a cellophane window in your box to see the doorknob? Extra $3. I couldn't find this out on the Home Depot site, it was in the FAQ on the Schlager website. The store only carries the V version, of course, since walk-in purchasers would be more likely to want to see them before buying them. Second tip, specific to these doorknobs but probably applicable to other products. The four packs are more expensive than buying four individual knobs, even in visibility packaging. I picked up a two-pound can of coffee at Kroger's years ago, late 1980s or early 1990s, and headed to check out with my one item. I plopped it on the belt and fished out my wallet. The cashier picked up the can and then, possibly because I was the only one in line, stopped to check the store ad from the newspaper. Sir, the one-pound cans are on sale this week. This can is regular price. I saw that, but the two-pound can is still cheaper than two one-pound cans. I offered with a smile on my face. So, she did a little mental math and realized that I was right. Well, that can't be right. She opined. I think she was about to call for the manager when I asked her to just ring me up. So, she did. As I headed toward the door, I heard her mumble, that's not right, it just isn't right. There are times I see two smaller units are cheaper than one big unit but not always. Be a savvy shopper and do the math. I get the alert that they are ready for pickup. Manager, where's is the cart that you had them in? Wait. They told you it was ready for pickup but hadn't pulled them from the floor. What was their plan if you showed up and they suddenly realized they were out of stock because someone else bought them?
bold of you to assume they had a plan. They did this to me a couple times last summer, luckily, I knew one of the managers and he was able to adjust the prices. I still can't wrap my head around their logic of not being able to match their own prices. If it's like Barnes & Noble, the store and the website are literally different businesses which compete against each other, both owned by the same company. Is that a stupid way to organize a corporation? Yes. Sounds like what Sears was doing. Private equity is the common thread between both of those. Any day now I expect to hear Barnes & Noble going the way of borders. Big box stores generally suck. Lately I've had big problems with tractor supply. I hate TS but there are times where it is the only place that has what I need. Recently it was oil, I wanted a particular kind of oil in a big, more than 10 gallons, volume. Website says store has it, store does not. That seems to be the norm with them. They have free shipping to the house so I guess I'm getting 80 plus pounds of motor oil shipped to the house. Big box stores generally suck their getting their asses kicked by Amazon. As a result, they try to cut overhead to be more competitive which puts more stress on their employees which makes the experience more painful for the customers. Which drives more business to places like Amazon. If a big box store would spend more on overhead to make the experience shopping there more pleasant they might be able to turn business around. But that would cut into C-suite bonuses for a few years so there's no way that's ever going to happen. The way to do it would be to have competent staff. They get rid of anybody with a brain. I don't know if they actually force them out or those people leave on their own. I'll never forgive Advance Auto for buying CarQuest. They got rid of all the good employees at our local CarQuest and a formerly profitable store closed within six months. Manager says, you know you could have just left them in the cart. I say, and you could have honored the price when I first got here. Reminds me of when I was just starting out in retail, store had closed about 10 minutes ago I was pushing carts in. Guy comes up on the motorcycle and parks in front of the store, directly under a no parking sign, and pretty much right in my way. So I'm bringing these carts in and watching him take off all his gear, it takes him like 10 minutes. Finally, he goes to walk in and gets told he can't come in. He looks at me and goes you could have told me the store was closed. I look around the parking lot and say you could have parked in nearly any one of these spots. Like out of hundreds of spots only a dozen had cars in them and they were all on the far side of the lot. I have been waiting for years to tell this story. I bought a storm door for my house at Home Depot. I wanted it to look nice so I also paid for the installation. I took the door home with me. When I got home, I looked up the installation online and it looked simple so I did it. I went back to Home Depot and asked for a refund on the installation. They gave me a full refund on both the installation and the door. Two days later a storm door is delivered to my house in anticipation of the installation. I took it back and tried to explain and they gave me a full refund on the door and installation again. Two weeks later an installer showed up at my house. I told him through the storm door I didn't need an installation. You guessed it, full refund on door and installation for a third time. Home Depot paid me about $1,000 to install their door on my house. Baller. Anytime I go to Walgreens to pick up something I saw on sale on their website, it's always like that. So I do the pickup as well. I asked if they'd honor the price for me, was declined, and they missed out on all of the impulse shopping I usually do in store. They not only got less money for what I did buy, but I bought less overall. Such a dumb idea. I would have been pretty tempted to place the order on my phone right in front of him. Otherwise, that was perfect. That would have been fine too. The employee doesn't give any shits at all. They just want to follow the rules, do their jobs and clock the hell out with a little headache as possible. This is less malicious compliance, more compliance. I was in there on Friday night after work to pick up a can of paint. Employee mixed it for me and I carried it to check out. When I lifted it up to place on the counter, the lid came off and the paint spilled all over me. The manager and the paint guy had a field day laughing at me. Didn't offer to help, didn't offer to replace my paint, nothing. A new employee took pity on me and found me a t-shirt to replace my top. I spent an hour in the bathroom trying to get the paint off so I could get into my car and go home. I refused to shop with them because of it.
Call corporate and they'll probably send you something for the cost you suffered. $100 or whatever is far better than to lose you as a lifetime customer.